As an imperial monarchy, it has been disgraced. Our recent experience with emperors leads many of us, and I would say a majority, into a wholly reasonable desire to re-establish the Republic. As a Republic, Rome flourished and will flourish again. Noble senators, it it is with great diffidence that I Yes! Those of you who, who greeted with silence or approbation the excesses of Tiberius Caesar or, or Caius Caligula Caesar are quick enough to, to find schoolboy pleasure in, in my oratorical limitations. I address cowards, self-seekers, murderers, non-entities, ready enough to cringe at the whip of a Caligula, but not at all willing to see that the, the sickness of Rome can only be cured by a change of heart. And, and, and not by a change of his political constitution. And you see standing before you the physician, nay, the surgeon, who will administer the emetic and, and cut out the ulcer. Rome will be what it was. A society in, in which no man need fear injustice. Its capital, a city in, in, in which men may walk freely at night. Its people united in a return to Roman virtue and, and the worship of the Roman gods, untainted by effeminacy or, or, or oriental pollutions. And I, I call for a wider understanding of the very term Roman. Those who subscribe to the Roman ethos, whether from, from Gaul or, or Germany or Asia, may call themselves Romans. Take it further, Claudius. Make Rome the mongrel center of a mongrel empire. Bring in the Jews, muttering prayers to their tribal deity. Conquer Britain, so that the blue-bottomed oyster crackers may mouth their barbarities in this noble house and defile its ancient marble. Like, like too many professional rhetoricians, the senator emits more noise than sense. Britain will be. Conquered, yes, but it will be many years, perhaps centuries, before it can be converted into anything more than a, an obedient tributary. As for the Jews, they are not wanted in Rome. They cannot assimilate, and they will not. But they are sectarian squabblings, they are a wandering race. Well, perhaps it would be better to let them wander back to Palestine. They would be content to find a Jewish king awaiting them, a king appointed by Rome. The Jews must leave Rome. And if that is not policy, acceptable to the Senate, then the Senate is unworthy to advise its emperor.
This should quieten the zealots down. They've got what they want. A Jewish king in Israel. Mm. <laughs> Worst of both worlds, if you want my opinion. Roman arrogance and priestly intolerance. We'll soon start cracking his whip. Do we wait for the whip, or do we travel? Some of us travel, James. Some of us stay where we are. Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. Which we reply, Aleichem Shalom. Aleichem Shalom. Shalom. Caleb. This is the Aquiline Roman who took my sister. The man who set her free. Also a friend. You're quick in granting your friendship, Aquila. He brought me back the money I gave him to help buy Sarah's freedom. And I've asked Aquila to teach me your language. To better impart us your orders. To know you better. To understand you. I may visit your land one day. My land? Has the Roman eagle released it from its talons? Rome considers it a friendly country. Friendship cannot be imposed. You invaded my country. You occupy it. But that's the mission of Rome, isn't it? To spread civilization. We build aqueducts, bridges, roads. Along them, law and order travel with us. Also war and death and slavery. We have our law. We had our order. Caleb, remember Valerius is a guest in this house. My house. I happen to love Sarah. Through her in my aquiline way. I love your country. I want to be ready to help it as much as I can. Do you think you can convince your legions to withdraw? To leave Jerusalem to my brothers, Judea to my people? Can you persuade your emperor to let us stay in Rome? I believe I can work for a better world. For a future of peace. A world with Rome in its own place. And a future without triumphant legions. Oh, you're a dreamer. We learned hard that there's danger in dreams. It's a dream I share with your sister. I had another sister. She died. Sarah is all I have left. Yet I feel I've lost her to you, to Rome. Valerius was the only one who helped her. God's will works in strange ways. The two of you may yet help make that dream come true. Not in our time, Aquila. Maybe not. But there's God's own time. God's own design. I offer you my friendship, Caleb. I can give you only my hatred in return. Our meeting. I had imagined it very different. Why? Did you think it would be enough to say, Shalom, I am your Roman brother-in-law, to wipe away the blood, the tears? Shalom. How can you, a Roman? Say shalom. It means peace be with you. I know. You brought war to us. You keep waging your war every day. I come to you in peace. I want to build peace, Caleb, with your help. <laughs> I have to be going, my friend. Shalom. Alechem. Alechem Shalom. Peace be with you. Yes? Julius Valerius, standard bearer of the guard. I was ordered to report to you. You're married to a Jewish woman. Are you not? I am. 
You are aware of our Emperor Claudius's ruling. All followers of the foreign superstition are banned from Rome. My wife is a citizen of Rome. The law applies to citizens of Rome as well. Do you mean she will have to leave? Unless, of course, you can prove that she has renounced her superstitious belief. How? The law allows you, as her husband, to conduct a trial in your own home. In the presence of three witnesses, you will ask her to sacrifice to the gods of Rome. You and your witnesses will report to us. Rome grants you every right. You must recognize Rome's right to ask for your loyalty. You may go. I cannot do it. I will never do it. You are not asked to believe, just to prove your loyalty. I stand accused of practicing a foreign superstition, and yet I'm asked to fake acceptance of a superstition which is foreign to me. How low do you, my husband, think my self-respect can fall? It is not only me you should consider. Think of our future. A mere gesture. Your hand, not your heart, Our future? What about myself, Valerius? No, I will not allow another lie. We have heard your wife, Valerius. We are convinced that there is no treason in her heart or mind. She is loyal to you, a soldier of Rome. You have to do it. It was the only thing to do. Tyrants must die. So why should I have bad dreams? I was never intended to be a murderer. Or a soldier. To kill barbarians. That's different. It's part of Rome's civilizing mission. Kill is to kill. Life is supposed to be sacred. Your brother and I have had to use our swords. Yet you're right. Life should be sacred. But all life? The life of a Caligula? The Nazarenes would say that even Caligula's life was precious to God. This is your destiny, O oh Romans. Put down the arrogance, spare the meek. Virgil wrote that. Do you know what I sometimes think? The peoples we conquer and rule are more adult than we are. Greeks have philosophies. You have a religion. All we have is troops, games, roads. We forget that we once had law and justice. I trust you don't voice these ideas in your camp. <sighs> Today's our Sabbath, I'd forgotten. You make me forget too much. Another Roman conquest. Hardly.
Choose your own servant of the goddess and make your offering. I'm the physician you summoned for one of your girls. Come. Where's the pain? I ache all over. Here. This is not a clean occupation. You're sick. You've developed an infection. Nothing new. Take this ointment. Give up this trade. It's not a trade. I'm consecrated to the goddess. I put my body at her service. Try to understand. Your body's like a precious vase. It contains your spirit the most precious gift you received. If you had a priceless perfume, would you break the vial that holds it? When you sell your body, you harm it and waste your spirit. No just God would demand such tribute. When they brought this goddess Astarte to our city, they said she was like Venus, the goddess of love. They told you that you should sell your body in the name of love. But love is given, not sold or bought. It brings pride, not shame. These priests use your innocence to feed their greed and corruption. This is a shameful service, a shameful goddess. <gasps> Give up this trade, I say. You are young. Walk out of this darkness. When a reverend Jew cannot get into his own place of worship, crammed with Gentiles, vain eloquence, and foreigners too. You, physician, listen to me. Keep out of there if you do not want your faith insulted and defiled. Is it the Tarsus man? Preaching resurrection and curing the sick. You'll be losing some of your patients. Some of you are Jews. Some of you are Gentiles. Yet fearers of a God you do not know. Others of you have worshipped sticks and stones and empty air. I bring the good news to all. The Son of God, who lived among us as a carpenter of Nazareth in Palestine, died for us and, most wonderful, has risen again from the dead. He leaves us his word, which is a simple one, love. He leaves us the truth of his victory and that of all who believe in him. He has conquered death and we are his partners in that conquest. Love is the denial of death. Be baptized in the water of life and learn a great renewal. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, 
there are going to be enough of the hungry in Judea, I can tell you. Three bad harvests in a row. And corn already rising beyond the reach of the purses of the people. And not only in Judea, even Italy. The Emperor Claudius is going to have his hands full. Let him feed his own. And his own include the people of Judea. Judea has her own king now. But the king is above such petty matters as the feeding of the people. What do you want, Agabus? You and Barnabas here have spoken of going back to Jerusalem. To meet Peter and James, yes, but not until we finished our work here in Antioch. You'll find no better work for the moment than taking money to Jerusalem. There's corn to be bought in Egypt, dried fruits in Cyprus. Oh, the price is high. But what can you expect in a time of coming want? Let your Antioch faithful think of their Judean brethren. This is a rich town. Get money. How much is in the grain stores in Jerusalem? Enough for two months, if there were to be a just distribution. But the rich are bribing and hoarding, and Herod Agrippa counts his gold. You've an urgent business on your hands. What time? I think we should try and leave at first light. Paul! Well, I... I've... I've heard you in the synagogue. And I, I think, have seen you on the banks of a certain stream, like a man who would swim but who fears the water may be cold. A man has to have time to think. What's your name? Luke. Greek, of course. A physician by trade. I approve of your philosophy of the healing of the sick. A cure is often a matter of confidence, which you would probably call faith. Are you finding faith? I think so. I think I'm ready to step into the water, however cold it is. Tomorrow, if I may. Well, tomorrow we start work of a different kind. It'd better be now, under the moon. <laughs> the moon? An Antioch goddess who has turned out only to be dead metal. Metal? Now, that's much more to the point. Tomorrow we start collecting gold and silver to buy food for the starving. Well, your trade is with the body. You should be interested in that. Enroll me in the service first, then give me my orders. It's like this, Metellus. There. Or do you want to be called Caleb? There's no further point in pretense, is there? Mm. Well, if you were rich, like these fat belly usurers, you could buy a Roman citizenship. Not officially, of course, but it is being done. The Emperor's secretaries, the Horus Majesty, the Empress Messalina. They're all making a quiet fortune selling it. Roman citizenship for sale. Oh, yes. <sighs> well, so much for a promising athletic career. Ah, but I would keep you on. I think you know that. Greek, Jew, Egyptian makes no difference to me. But you, my boy, You've got qualities. But it's more than a job worth. You know why I came to Rome. <laughs> <laughs> to destroy Rome. What else? <laughs> no, Caleb, I know. You helped kill Gaius Caligula, and you found your sister married to an army man, yes? Julius Valerius. Talk of the power of love. A Roman marrying a Jewish slave. That, my friend, turns her into a Roman. At least she's safe. Caleb, you should be the last person to discriminate about blood with me. All blood is the same. I've seen enough of it here to know. I'm as good a Numidian Roman as you will find. There's nothing wrong with being a Roman. Besides, my friend, you seem to be quite fond of a particular one, yes? Hmm? Good luck, my friend.
Claudius gives us no more time. We're grateful to you, but no, we cannot accept. One Jew may be easily hidden, disguised among the slaves at your country house. Add two more. You've got two too many. Besides, we want to go back to Corinth. It was our first home after leaving our native Pontus. We've heard that men traveling in the name of Jesus of Nazareth are going there. Yes, great things are happening, Caleb. The followers of Christ are becoming legion. A peaceful army all over the empire. There is no victory for such an army, Aquila. You've seen it. One beast dies, another springs up. A stuttering idiot. Claudius does not stutter anymore. Power has given him a sharp tongue and claws. We used to think of him as a man of learning, rich with virtues. Now we see him lusting after prostitutes. He keeps two of them in his palace. And his wife, Messalina, takes revenge by selling herself in a brothel. It may be a blessing our having to leave Rome after all. When do you leave? At dawn. We've sold everything we had. Yes, we should have enough money for our passage to Greece. When do you go? I leave for Tuscany tomorrow to see my mother. Caleb will meet me there in a few days with the wagons carrying the supplies from the harbor of Ostia. From gladiator to wagoner. A brilliant career. I'll be farming your land. And one day, you'll work for me on mine. <laughs> In Judea. That's all he dreams about. Not like Sarah. Have you seen her again, Caleb? Not yet. I'll try and see my stray sister when she's alone. May God go with both of you. Which? The one from Nazareth? Hear, O Israel. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Try again. <laughs> Try again. I don't know, I tell you. The man Peter. For the last time, where is he? They're not in Jerusalem. <laughs> They've gone to ground, haven't they? Where? I don't know. You were seen with one of them yesterday. Who was it? I wasn't. I didn't. His name! Ah! His name! James! We cannot allow the spreading of dissent in our nation. Death sentences are seldom unanimously accepted, often regretted, never commendable. This James, whom they call the brother of John, is a Hebrew Christian, very close indeed to the man Jesus who was executed. He is not greatly offended against the Jewish law, so why James? It is Peter we want, it is Peter we shall get! The beheading of James will smoke him and his confederates out. Peter is the true blasphemer. James is merely available. I am very uneasy about this. Once again, fear pushes brother against brother. The man about whom I worry most is the man Saul, who now calls himself Paul. I understand he is now in Judea. He is very cunning and ready to plead the rights of a Roman citizen. Too dangerous, too difficult. And anyway, it would not be expedient even if we could catch him. He has brought money from Antioch to buy food for the people. The people are stupid. It would be hard to persuade them that such a man is a criminal. Bad deeds are not removed by good works. <laughs> Tell that to the starving people of Jerusalem.
I prefer to tell them that this present famine is the fault of the Christians. God's displeasure at their heresy is visited on the whole Jewish people. The blood of James will appease the Lord God. And yet your majesty, if I may be so bold, believes none of these things. Oh, I believe in the Godhead. I even believe in those human attributes we attach to the Godhead. God cannot be portrayed by human hands. That is our faith. Oh, yes! The eternal, sacred Jewish faith in the great, merciful, vindictive father of the tribes. Forgive my private skepticism, but I have lived in the great world. Rome, I mean. That's him. That's Peter the fisherman. Seize him! Now, you move that animal out of my way. Hey, hey, hey! hey. What, what are you doing? Here! Come 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 here! You are lucky. The man they called James? Your brother, wasn't he? He was executed yesterday. You're kindly allowed to live till after Passover. Gives you time to brood over things, doesn't it? Eat your nice dinner. night. The mass seems so long ago. You said, not my will, but your will be done. Well, those are my words now. And yet, you called me the rock. You told me to feed your sheep. I've got work to do, Lord. And I pray that by your power, I may be allowed to do it. But all is in your hands. Not my will, but yours be done. Lord, I believe. Lord, I hope. Lord, above all, I love. Amen. Wake, Peter. Rise.
King Herod. Peter the fisherman has escaped. Escaped? No! If only you had talked to your father before he died. He wouldn't listen to any of my reasons. He said there's no place for you in our family as long as I live. Forgive me. Forgive me for hurting you. You should have tried to understand your father. Yet you went on to live with a barbarian, a gladiator. Mother, in Caleb's country, men know how to read and write. Their history is older than ours. You were blinded by passion. You can't see what is best for you. What would have been right for your father? Let me bring Caleb to you, Mother. I will show you. You'll never set foot in this house. When I'm no more, all this will be yours. Karina? Karina? Lena! I hardly recognize you. I was hoping to meet you. I've seen your mother since I returned from Greece. I've always felt welcome here. I wish I did. I know. I know. Time heals. Do you know, I always used to think of you as my little sister. Except when you outraced me. <laughs> This is Caleb. Linus is a childhood friend. Caleb is from Judea. Judea. Karina's mother told me about you. It's getting late. Time we moved on. You know she's refused to let us stay. I read it in your eyes. Thanks for being a friend to Corinna. <laughs> The Feast of Compitalia. Do you remember? Yes. Father and mother were dancing and singing. Our slaves were wearing our clothes. There were bonfires and wine and stars. It was wonderful. Lares. More gods. I've come to know your god, Caleb. And your messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. Not my messiah. You must have talked to some Nazarenes. Or Christians, as they call them now. Yes, I met people from your land. I learned from them. You can call me a Christian. You have changed. <laughs> For the better, I hope. I'll tell you my story someday. It's very beautiful. Did you ever see Jesus? 
Once. From afar. He came to Jerusalem at Passover. Thousands greeted him as our deliverer. Didn't take the Romans long to dispose of him. Bail deliverer. His deliverance is just beginning. If you need shelter, there's that old mill down there which my father left to me. Thank you. God love you both. I hope you decide to stay. There is reason in your mother's refusal. A Roman patrician married to a... Well, what am I? A gladiator and a Jewish rebel. They're hardly commendable titles. I am yours, Caleb. My gods, your god, know it. In my country, marriage is a commitment for life. Only death is more final. Everything happened so fast. I love you. And I try to understand what you've told me and what you still guard as your own. My dreams. You'd be horrified by them. The liberation of my land. The humiliation of the oppressors. The fall of the Roman eagle. Why do you want to build a barrier between us? It's just that at times I feel guilty at having forgotten a call. What I considered my mission. My revolt is confined to dreams. I do not care for the Roman vocation to civilize the world. Your land is yours, your home your own, and I... You, you are indeed mine, and I yours. Where you are... Gaia, there I am, Gaia. Your Roman marriage vow. Your arms are my canopy. Repeat after me. I love this man. I love this man. Behold, thou art consecrated unto me according to the law of Moses and Israel. Behold, thou art consecrated unto me according to the law of Moses and Israel. The Lord is our rabbi. The only one available. <laughs> the greatest one. <laughs> Now he knows we are married. Yes! We welcome the Lord, auspicious and sinners. We trust they will find their entertainment satisfactory. We have arranged a, 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 what have we arranged? Wild beasts, Majesty. Gladiators. And here, O oh Holy One, gifts. A token of Caesar's benevolence with his greetings. of the faith and friends of the faithful. We are assembled in a time when little would seem to hinder the growth of this church in Jerusalem and the daughter churches of Asia. The rule of Judea since the sudden death of its king is, as you all know, reverting to Rome. 
we expect a procurator appointed by the Emperor Claudius, and we anticipate a certain measure of Roman justice. <laughs> James, good and just, whose name none of us can utter without remembering his martyred namesake, James leads the Jerusalem church. My work lies elsewhere, as does that of so many of my colleagues, Paul, Barnabas, Mark, Titus, who are busily bringing the word to the Gentiles. And we are met today to consider a particular question. The relationship between these same Gentiles and the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, who, born a Jew, came to fulfill, not to abolish, the law of Moses. But what about circumcision? We demand circumcision. Friends, we know that when God called us his chosen people, he also meant us to be a, a light unto the Gentiles. Now I conclude from this that we should stop troubling the Gentiles about circumcision. But that we should write to our new churches in Asia telling them not to worship idols, not to commit fornication, and not to eat meat that has been strangled and contains blood. Will not this meet our needs? It is understanding that we wed the word of Moses to the word of Jesus. Stand firm against trials. Let hope keep you confident. Share with those who are in need. Open your house to them. Be happy with those who are happy. Weep with those who weep. Remember that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. We are loved by God as the chosen people, loved for our ancestors. But just as our ancestors changed from being disobedient to God and were forgiven, so those of you who are now disobedient will find mercy in God. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Corinth, Paul. You know me. I just heard you speak. Your words moved me. So I waited, hoping to meet you. We need your guidance. Is you should guide me. I need lodgings. <laughs> Very difficult to find. Corinth is full up, partly due to us Jews, of course, being expelled from Rome. Why don't you come to my home, meet my wife? Break bread with us. The Lord be praised for generous men. Thank you. Aquila's the name. Aquila from Pontus. <laughs> you find this blasphemy comic? For I work in the name of the Lord and they hail me in the name of Mercury. The God of thieves, but also the God of fine speech. I think the story has humor in it. Like that other story you told about being put in prison, and then an earthquake comes and opens the doors for you. <laughs> I always knew that God had a fine sense of the comic. Oh, I don't see it. Perhaps you will when you see the stories written down. These tales of the Lord's work must not be lost to the future. Precisely the words of Luke. Who's he? He's a Greek physician I met and converted in Antioch. He has a, a taste for writing. He too has what you would call a sense of the comic. He wrote to me. He wants to travel with me. Oh, I see. I am to become a character in a Greek tale. Oh, well, what's more real than some of the Greek heroes? Odysseus, Hector, Ajax. Why should the pagans have all the best heroes? What's wrong with the travels of Paul? Oh, no, no. <laughs>
You smell wonderful. The whole world smells baked bread. Oh-ho! you want from me? I know you. You know Lucisca? No. Then you would know me in a different way. You know the other me. The Emperor's wife. Messalina. As you can see, what they say about me is true. The Emperor's wife sells her body. What do you want from me? You are a very brave soldier. One of the first to exalt Claudius, after you helped kill Caligula. I killed a monster. A man able to strike down a monster can easily find the courage again. You don't like this place. I found an escape here. From a life. From a husband I loathe. You do not really know the man you serve with such loyalty. I married Claudius when I was 16 years old. I bore him two beautiful children, Octavia and Britannicus, his son, his pride, joy. But it is for my son that he tolerates me. He is my emperor. I am bound to him by oath. You still haven't told me what you want from me. I have no trusted friends in the palace. Claudius's ministers detest me. Narcissus is only preoccupied with increasing his wealth. Palace would like to see me replaced by another woman. Agrippina. She has been plotting against me, trying to seduce Claudius. And if she isn't stopped, she will have not only me killed, but Britannicus as well. The Emperor would never allow it. My husband is weak. Easy prey for seductive women. A mark of senility. They laugh at him. People love him. You are going to have to choose. 
between a waning emperor and Messalina. You're married? Yes. To a Jewess? Whom you barely avoided having deported. Roman law saved her. Roman law can destroy you. Adultery with the emperor's wife is a capital crime. Accusations are easily made. And Claudius is still jealous. This is my last visit. to this house. A new Rome is about to dawn. Today, I am a new woman. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. You will, in due time. I have asked that you be assigned to me, to look after me. You will grow to know me, to like me. And soon your eyes will be open to the truth. I will never betray my wife. I know. That I read in you too, you love your wife too much. But I believe in love. It can cut across barriers, oaths, vows, duties. Tomorrow, you shall escort me to the place where I was reborn. I shall remain here for an hour or so. You'd better station guards around the house in the garden, discreetly. Do you know whose house this is? No. Good. Very good. Full marks for discretion. How would Claudius feel if he knew his wife was betraying him? Are you frightened? Never be frightened of clear thinking, Silius. And never enter into anything that you're not willing to pursue to the end. Our climb to the Imperial throne may have started in this bed. But now, the curtains are open. And Rome. All of Rome will know that we are to be married.
Duke knocks on the door. That's the way we do it. <laughs> My name is Nero. Nero. Remember that, Otto. I'm glad I came back to Rome to see you, but... I must be on my way. Corinna will be worried. If by that you mean you've outstayed your welcome here. No, just anxious to see her again. I wish you knew her. She helped me change my mind and come here. I'm happy with her and with my life. Though sometimes I feel guilty for not resuming my true work. What, killing the Romans in Palestine? Mm. Not very complimentary to your brother-in-law. You're in the house of a Roman hero. I was glad to learn that Valerius thinks as I do. The Roman Empire is a great sham, foul with corruption, yet convinced it has this mission to clean up the world. The masters were only as good as the servants. The ordinary Romans are just human beings, but the Roman state, that's something else. Am I right, Valerius? Eh? Oh, yes, quite right. He wasn't listening. I have to go out. Where? Why? Consort to Messalina again? No. Something vaguely mysterious. Just like those trips with the Emperor's wife. There was no mystery about those. Swearing to silence, threatening hints. All with the sweetest of imperial smiles. But I knew where she was going. Well, I've heard the stories about her. They're about her being unfaithful to the Emperor with, with men who'd like to... Stick a knife in the Emperor? Yes. Senators and others, not my good Valerius and other decent men who work for their living. I have one last report to make. Sarah, it's possible to tell you now. I've been removed from that duty as from today. I did in fear. I had too much to lose. Now I'm happy to be back in the Emperor's service. Except for... Well, I shall know tonight, perhaps. Mysteries again? There was not one moment in her presence when I felt safe. I'd better say no more. It doesn't matter anymore anyway. But whenever you hear the word sorcery, don't laugh. I wouldn't dream of laughing. And so my darling Valerius had to fight against temptation. Caleb, will you walk with me as far as the palace? Yes, but is it safe? Nothing's ever safe these days. Nobody's going to worry about you being a Jew when you're in the company of a Roman officer. Anyway, I think the Jews will soon be allowed to come back. I just feel in need of a companion. I hope to see you again soon. Safe journey to your Corinna. We must go. Are you armed? I may sound foolish, but a married man has to be cautious. I've learned to understand about caution. that you were set upon for that purpose. I mean, these were not just common robbers. I was expecting that some way would be sought to keep my mouth closed, noble palace. If my brother-in-law had not been near me... Yes, 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 yes. Your, your brother-in-law, whoever he is, deserves well of you. And I suppose of the state. Now, you must come and talk to the emperor. But I haven't expected... All the emperor's heard of you and of your loyalty to Tiberius. He thinks well of you. There's no need to worry about the future of your career. If all goes as we pray it will. Amen. 
Uh, what was that? I'm sorry. A Hebrew word I learned, meaning, may it be so. Uh, I beg the Empress pardon. Oh, oh uh, no, uh, uh, come in, come in. Uh, uh, display of, of uh, avuncular affection only. Well, uh, <coughs> this is the, the young man I, I hear so well of. Hmm? Well, I've been awaiting you with, with some eagerness. Well, good. So, now I, I brace myself and, and you, you tell me all. As the Lord Palace suspected, all the Empress's visits were to the same man, a consul. Yesterday, before I was dismissed from Her Imperial Majesty's service, I heard her address the Consul Silius as husband. The gentleman in question responded with wife. That was after a visit to a shrine, which, as I already knew, was associated with... You were right, Pallas. You, s you said she'd do this. A bigamous marriage to show her, her contempt, not only for her husband, but, but for Roman law. A signal to the, to the world of glory and depravity. And when the Sicilians think he can strike the blow which will secure him the imperial crowd. Where are they now? The road they took, I watched on your instruction, was for Naples. I want their immediate arrest and their almost immediate execution. It was for a trial. All of Rome knows of a depravity too foul for its very sewers to discharge. I've been weak, Pallas. Tolerant, Caesar. Ah, uh, tolerant. Tolerant. Young man, the world is more evil than any man knows. Every day there's some new surprise, some new putrid revelation. The times need to be washed scoured and become the tablet for the writing of a new age. We're ready for a new age, a fresh beginning. But no man or God speaks. None gives the word. None gives the word. N none gives the the word. People of Ephesus, I come to you after many journeys from Jerusalem to Tarsus and from Tarsus to Syria. I have brought the good news to Cyprus, to Antioch in Pisidia, to Iconium, Lystra and Derba, to Philippi, to Athens, to Thessalonica, to Corinth. My authority was conferred upon me by the living God himself. As his apostle and slave, I have seen and suffered as much from the waves of the sea as I have from men with hard hearts in the towns of my travels. It is no easy work to bring the good news, 
yet the hardship is softened by God's grace. For God's love permits the working of the yeast of his word through signs and wonders. When you say the man Paul has cured the sick, given sight to the blind, driven out the frenzy of devils from men's souls, you say wrong. It is the power of God working through Paul. For the man Paul has no power. Oh, enough philosophy. It's time for my music lesson. You will need philosophy, Nero, more than you will need music. In what, Seneca? In whatever position in the state you hold, you must prepare for responsibility. But I want to be a great actor, a great singer, a great dancer. Isn't there such a thing as responsibility towards art? It is not a moral responsibility. Oh, you talk so much of morality. And by morality, you mean... Ugh, I forget the word. Repression. Repression. That is true. You repress me from seeing life. The execution of the Empress Messalina. That was hardly life. So now, we are to have a new Empress. Who will it be, Seneca? That is for the Emperor to decide. Not the Senate? Why the Senate? There's some ancient Roman law that says not even an Emperor can marry his own brother's daughter. Yes. That is incest, an ancient prohibition that no power can reverse. I'll wager you money on that. One hundred sesterces. I do not have a hundred sesterces. Oh, You're not sure of winning. I do not wager. Betting is idle, frivolous. Immoral. That depends on the sum bet. Your mother will not become empress. On that I will wager you a tenth of a sister's, to show you that I can unbend like anyone else. But I will not have to pay it. The thought of a man marrying his own niece. Even the emperor. Even the emperor. You've wasted the last two minutes of our lesson. You may go to your music now. The Emperor will marry my mother Even though she should marry another For the Emperor can do no wrong That is the end of my song <laughs> There Better? Mm. Better, my love My niece, my wife but only in the sense of better than yesterday and I'm not as, as bad as tomorrow. Nobody knows about tomorrow. Mm. And, and aging man knows that tomorrow he will not be any younger. Oh, these shining platitudes, gems of imperial wisdom. I, I write history. Moral platitudes I leave to Seneca. Get rid of that man. Hmm? Why? He teaches my son treason in the guise of philosophy. Treason? To the Emperor? The Empress. Philosophy is philosophy, and morality is morality. 
There are, there are no moral exceptions for Seneca. We are living in a state of incestuous b pollution, whatever the Emperor or, or, or the Senate say. He's, he has probably been telling your son that. I was taught as a girl that the whole point of power was to be able to break the rules. I've certainly broken one rule. You regret it? You taught me to be shrewd and ruling. In addition to providing new raptures of the body, raptures which, which not even Messalina. Ah, no. I don't regret it. But... Sometimes I, I feel, well, culpable. Chiefly when I, when I look at your son, Nero. There is something wrong about, about having a, a grand nephew who calls you father. He, he calls me father far more often than Britannicus does. He seems to, to be trying to implant an idea in my, in my mind. The idea that he's fitter for the purple than Britannicus. Britannicus is a fool. Britannicus may be the son of uh, Messalina, but he has inherited surprisingly few vices. And to me, he, he is a living reminder of my beloved brother and of, uh, of, of my triumphs over, over the Britons. Which we're not allowed to forget. Every time you mention the name Britannicus, I feel we're expected to, to rise and drink a toast. I shut from my mind, dear niece, wife, Agrippina, particular thought that you love your son far more than you love me. Now let me sleep. I, my head throbs. Sleep. Father of all the Romans. Sudden, you say, but not too sudden. The art of the sleep bringer lies in the imitation of nature. You know how to administer? I know.
on Domitius Nero is late. Late again. Not on the hour, but five minutes before the hour. Isn't that military punctuality, my son? Huh? Dear, dear Britannica? A family dinner isn't a parade, Father. No. Well, at least in common politeness. Uh, an empire ought to be run like, like a fusion of a, of a family and an army. If, if that's possible. Hey, dear Claudius, don't wait for Demetrius. I, I have little appetite, my dear. Still, the, the odor is seductive. <laughs> Am I profound? Fondest regrets. Crowded streets, and one of the slaves carrying my litter broke his ankle. Imagine. <laughs> oh, I do apologize, dearest father. I beat the bull, of course, and then I borrowed a slave from someone else. I forget who. Ah, mushroom. Delicious. Yeah, you take these. I can't eat. Claudius, dear. They were just brought from Nemi. They're your very favorites. Well, and since you order them, my dear, I... Oh, I'm so pleased. Let's drink a toast. To the Emperor's restored appetite and health. May the Emperor Claudius live forever. Even you, my dear, can, cannot prevent me from, from turning into a god. Gluttony. Always one of my failures. The virtues of the, the temperance. Seneca is, is very good on that subject. He's... Oh. Oh. Father.
News? All over. A stroke after dinner. His heart suddenly stopped. He proclaimed the succession. He proclaimed it. Be so good as to assure the Emperor that the Praetorian Guard is ready to serve him with the devotion it gave to his father. Um, you use the word father as a figure of speech, I take it. The Emperor-designate is not Britannicus. Not Britannicus. The Emperor is the son of my father. And luckily she has no other. For the Emperor can do no wrong. And that is the end of my soul. <laughs> That's the right signal. Ah, oh, Shalom. Oh, Shalom. You brought shalom. the baby. Shalom. It's wonderful shalom. to see you again. It's good to see you back Join in us, Rome won't you? again. How's little Ruth? She's sleeping. My husband's lulled her to sleep with the story of Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome, who were abandoned under a fig tree and fed by a she-wolf. Isn't she too young to understand it? Ah, Valerius believes it's never too early to turn even a baby into a full-blooded Roman. <laughs> but she's a Jew, like her mother. Both. Like Paul. Yes, Paul of Tarsus. It's a strange coincidence. Sarah and I once knew a Saul of Tarsus. Wait, I heard some story about him. He changed his name? Yes, along with his ways. We met him in Corinth. He worked with me. Of course, the same trade. Yes, the trade he uses to finance his other trade, his real trade, spreading the word. We learnt a lot from Paul. About Jesus the Nazarene? He said something very strange, Paul. He said, wait. Don't rush into it. God worked on me like a flash of lightning. But on others, it's a lingering, slow, sweet skill. I always remember those words. Those were good days. Do you remember that evening over dinner? When Paul said he looked forward to baptizing us in the Tiber. But when you look at the state of Rome today... There's a certain new tolerance. More Jews about. We have these meetings. You sound more positive now. What was it he said? Lingering, slow, sweet, something or other? Skill. It takes a lot of skill to weave a future for two. Women are great weavers. <laughs> I was hoping to meet Peter here. Yes, I you know how sad he'll feel not to be here for Passover. Shame. There, there he is going in now. The man himself, Paul, the renegade Saul, with a man from Ephesus, a Greek physician, a Gentile. 
taking Gentiles into the temple. Now we have him. Call the others. Tell the priests. Get them both when they come out. Thus far, no further. You see, it's forbidden. Well, there's the sign. Written in Latin and Greek. Read it. Whoever is a follower of a foreign religion is forbidden to go any further. Anyone who trespasses beyond this gate will be killed. And he alone shall be answerable for his death. You go your way, Luke. I must perform the rite of purification. Thank you. 